We are now at part three of lecture 15 of applied machine learning. And now in this video, I would like to define an important deep learning model called the convolutional neural network. And this is going to use the two operations that we defined uh, in the previous video, which were uh, convolutions and pooling. So remember that uh, convolutions are, uh, are, uh, are an operation that we can perform over a signal G, which is denoted here in blue, and we take a filter F, which is in gray here, and we apply it to the signal, we essentially slide it over the image along all the axes, and at each step we perform a dot product, uh, and the value of this dot product at each position forms this kind of 2 by 2 grid, and uh, uh, this filter encodes some kind of pattern, and if we see the presence of this pattern in a particular location, then the then this activation map will have a higher value in some locations and a lower value in other locations. Um, and then another op operations that operation that we saw was called pooling, where we uh, take a two by two grid. This is typically the output of a convolution. And then we break it down into parts and we take only the largest value of each part. And what this means is that um, if we have the presence of a certain signal in this red image, in this, in this red area, it may not matter for downstream applications, whether it's in the, it doesn't matter which one of these four pixels contains the useful feature, as long as it's found in the top quadrant, that's all we need to know. And so the pooling operation reduces the dimension and it only preserves the useful information. And because the signal is, because the pooled array is smaller, it's easier to operate with, it's, it's, it's easier to perform uh, data analysis with a, sm with a smaller array. And that's the benefit of pooling. So a convolutional neural network is also a sequence of layers that combine these operations called convolution and pooling. There are actually many kinds of structures that we could use for convolutional neural networks, but I'm going to define here uh, the most simple one, uh, but it's also one that's really powerful and, uh, and, and that they can achieve good results in practice. <clears throat> so a convolutional neural network is also a sequence of layers but now these layers can be grouped in modules. And each of these modules have the following structure. They contain a convolution layer, which is followed by a nonlinear activation. This can be a sigmoid or a ReLU. Uh, ReLU means rectified linear unit. Uh, we, mentioned this, uh, we, we mentioned this type of activation in our first lecture on neural networks. And then there is a pooling layer, which can downsample the size of this input. Um, and often at the very output, we also have a dense layer, which, uh, which I haven't mentioned here, which I haven't uh, included here, but uh, we all often have a, have a dense layer. So the definition of a convolutional neural net is really simple. Again, it's, a, it's simply a composition of the operations that we saw earlier. And of course, the parameters of these operations, well, here, the, the pooling doesn't have any parameters the activation doesn't have parameters, they're all in the convolutional layers, and the parameters of the convolutional layers are the filters. So the neural network will learn which filters are important. And also when I say a convolutional layer, this actually contains a number of convolutions, so it's not just one convolution, it's many filters <clears throat> that are applied to the same input, and those form uh, a stack of activation maps, as we saw in the earlier videos. So this is a vanilla structure of the neural net. And even small modifications of this architecture can, <clears throat> can achieve really good results. <clears throat> One of the earlier and very famous examples of convolutional neural networks is this model for digit recognition, which was uh, created by Lacoon et al. Uh, it goes back to 1998. <clears throat> and this was uh, an early success of convolutional neural networks, this worked very well for digit recognition. Uh, the input is a grayscale image of a, of a digit. So here it's a, in this example, it's a letter, but in, it, could, it, could, it could be a letter, but it was also very effective on digits. And then the way this neural network works is that 
we take this image, we apply a number of convolutions. Here uh, we have uh, six convolutions uh, of a particular size. Uh, the output are uh, feature, so I would imagine these would be four by four, but I guess it's not technically specified here. Um, but th these would be convolutions of a certain size. Again, my guess is four by four. Um, and, uh, and then the output is, um, is, uh, is, um, is a number of uh, activate stack activation maps. Then these get fed into another convolution uh, that uh, gives us a smaller stack of activation, but that's and it's the same depth. Then we have even more, uh, even more, and then these get smaller. And when we say subsampling here, uh, this just means pooling. So this gets pulled into um, uh, sorry. So these twenty eight by twenty eight, we apply uh, pooling with a size of with a region that's two by two, this downsamples uh, the size of the neural, the, the size of these activation maps by two in along each dimension. So now we have fourteen by fourteen. And then we apply another convolution. Um, now we have a set of ten by ten maps. And finally, we uh, we have. Um, uh, so here we again perform downsampling uh, by a factor of two, and then in the end we apply a number of dense layers. So we just look at all of these as a big, uh, as a big set of neurons. We perform, we, we 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 feed all of them as input to a dense neural network layer, which we saw in the previous lecture. We have another layer and then another layer, and this one is the output layer, and it outputs probabilities over ten possible digits. So this is an example of a structure of a real-world neural network, and this achieved uh, state-of-the-art performance, and uh, in fact, it achieved um, performance that is good enough for practical uses like sorting mail on, uh, on a data set of handwritten digits. Um, another famous example is the AlexNet from 2012 by Krzyzewski et al. And uh, this again has a really similar structure. We start with an image. Now, in this case, we have three channels. So this is a, a colored image that's of dimension 224 by 224. Notice that this is much larger than what we had before. And then we apply uh, convolutions of, uh, of dimension 11 by 11 on this data set. And we have uh, tensors. So we apply two sets of convolutions. Uh, the reason there's two is the, the reason that you have two of each of them is because uh, this was actually implemented over two graphical processing units, and they uh, they ran both of these in parallel. Um, so this is a, a bit of a technicality, but the idea is that we apply 48 feature maps. Uh, we apply 48 filters, which gives us 48 uh, activation maps. Uh, and now we have this image 224 by 124. Um, the way this is done, it gives us an activation map that's 55 by 55. Then it gets after applying max pooling, we narrow it down to 27 by 27. Then we perform more uh, more operations, more convolutions. We have 128, 200, 128 uh, activation maps. Then it keeps increasing. And then at the end, we feed this to a dense neural network. And the output is a 1,000 dimensional output layer because we actually have 1,000 different classes that we can predict. Um, and again, this is a, a structure of how a convolutional neural network can look like. Um, and by the way, between each box here, we have a nonlinear activation. So this was actually a very successful uh, model. In 2012, it significantly outperformed the previous state of the art on a competition called ImageNet. Uh, essentially, for years, the accuracy was around 25, 28, 30 percent. And then in one year, it almost half, it, it almost reached the performance by half. Then the next year, it also dramatically went down. And by using these convolutional um, uh, convolutional architectures, in a few years, the accuracy went down. So in the space of three years, the accuracy went down from 25% to 3.5% uh, or 3.6%. 3, 3 and uh, and this was uh, an incredible achievement in, uh, in the field of image recognition. And it demonstrated that convolutional neural networks are an immensely powerful model, and uh, it, it has led to convolutional neural, net neural networks being used 
almost everywhere in computer vision, uh, especially for tasks like image recognition uh, and also a lot of other related tasks like tasks like detection or um, other forms of image analysis. So here I will just define this algorithm as a um, little bit form more formally. Again, it's a form of supervised learning. It can be used for regression and classification, and along other dimensions, it's really it really behaves like a like a neural network. Now, before convolutional neural networks existed, computer vision algorithms used to work with handcrafted features for images. I mentioned earlier that it's really hard to create these features, and there were in years of research went into defining specialized uh, features for images. One popular image feature was called SIFT, which stands for Scale Invariant Feature Transform. Um, I, I will not go into the details of this. Uh, another one was called HOG, which stands for Histogram of Oriented Gradients. Um, so it would essentially look at the way the image is varying here. And if we were to visualize it, it would it looks a lot like, like the edges that we that we saw in some of our earlier examples. Um, and by using convolutional neural networks, we can extract the, these features, like the SIFT and HOGS feature, the SIFT and HOGS feature, features, we can extract the equivalent of these features from data in a purely data-driven way. So to give you a better understanding of what I mean by that, I'm going to show you uh, an example from a paper by Zeiler and Fergus from 2013, which was one of the earlier papers to visualize the internal of a successful uh, and powerful convolutional neural network model. So here we have uh, a model, which is a sequence of convolutional layers, and we can visualize what each layer does by finding patches of the image, so subsets of images that have really high activation responses. And we can also visualize the, the, the filters themselves um, using certain techniques. So if we look at the first layer of a convolutional neural networks, and if we visualize what each filter does, these filters tend to detect certain simple structures in the data, like edges and blobs. If we were to visualize these filters, it would look like this. So this is a, a little filter that get that, that, that outputs a high value if it detects an edge along this angle in, and this one it has a high value if it detects this kinds of ed edges and this is a blob it's a transition between these two colors so these are different um, these are different edges and you can see that this one is activated the most by this set of images which have these kind of diagonal lines from top left to bottom right and then this green one gets activated by these kinds of green patterns this one uh, gets activated when by these kinds of smooth gradients. So this is what is learned at the bottom layer. It learns to detect simple geometrical shapes. Then as we go progressively higher in the neural network, uh, the neurons at the higher layer, layer, they fire when certain, they again fire when activated by certain patterns, but these patterns become increasingly complex. So it may now look for uh, particular, you know, circles like this one, these are still edges, these are curved shapes, uh, these are other kinds of curves, and, uh, and so these are activated by um, patches which look like this. And now these start to look like objects, like perhaps the wheels of a car, or maybe this could be the texture of some animal. Um, these are now higher level textures that start to become a little bit more useful. And now if we visualize this even further at higher layers, we start to have more useful texture. We start to have more interesting textures here. Um, here we even start to have the outline of a person that is, so essentially what this means is that this neuron, there's one neuron that is triggered and it fires when we have a particular shape that has, uh, when we have a particular input with this kind of form. And then as we go higher, we start to recognize more complex patterns. Like here we have the, the snout of a dog. Um, here we have something which looks like an eye and it's triggered by these images that have eyes. So this is an, again an example of how a convolutional neural network learns complex features from data and it structures them in hierarchical representations which are really powerful and which lead to 
really uh, uh, competitive and accurate performance on a lot of real world data sets. So this summarizes my description of the convolutional neural network. And again, I want to emphasize that these are really useful models because they're, uh, well, in themselves, they are really powerful. And they also have a lot of useful features. For example, they also have a lot of other useful properties. For example, we can often train large convolutional neural networks, and then we can use some of these um, uh, neurons, some of their outputs as features for other applications. So for example, we run the neural network, we see the outputs of these kinds of neurons that are, that are triggered on, uh, uh, you know, on, on, on these kinds of images. And now we have a dog detector. Uh, and if we have another application, which is to detect I don't know, breeds of dogs or to detect you know, pedestrians or not pedestrians, or if we have another different data set from the one on which this one was trained, we can transfer these features to other data sets. Uh, so we can take a pre-trained CNN on a large data set and we can fine tune it uh, on, a, on a smaller data set and we can have really high performance on that small data set even though, if, even though the, the data set is small. And also convolutional neural networks can be used as building blocks in more complicated algorithms. Uh, for example, the earlier algorithm that I showed you in the first video that did image captioning, it used a convolutional neural network to initially parse the image. And there are many other tasks uh, on which convolutional neural networks are effective. And this is why it's such a powerful model.